Hey, it's Mike here, and today when brain fog, memory issues, and other issues along those lines are not nutritional, a few influencers in the past have cited these not gotten blood tests and then said, oh, you know, I need to quit my vegan diet because these appear to be nutritional issues, but they could be caused by some other things that are actually not as rare as one might think, so we're gonna investigate those. Let's go. Quick disclaimer here, I'm gonna be talking about a few things that would be very easy to convince yourself that you have, so don't self-diagnose, please. Again, I'm not a medical professional, so go seek out medical professionals to get answers on these. Okay. That being said, what I'm gonna talk about is something I think absolutely should be on more people's radar. I'm gonna let the experts talk about it here and there, so you're gonna get it from them as well. So anyway, what the heck am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about a range of things from disassociative disorders to depersonalization and derealization disorder, all of which can have symptoms that more or less mimic nutritional issues. Furthermore, in order to have these disassociative derealization experiences, you don't necessarily have to have these disorders. You can have more short-term bouts of these. We're gonna get into all of it. I've never heard anybody talk about this connection, so I'm gonna do a short video on it. And I was really just doing some general research when I came across these honestly really powerful concepts that I think people, regardless of diet, should know about in terms of psychological well-being. <laughs> and when doing that research, I went, wow, this sounds a lot like what was described by ex-vegans like Elise Parker slash Rob alignment or Nikocado Avocado describing their mental states of being, you know, very foggy and hard to remember things. But I want to emphasize in no way am I trying to like diagnose them or even really analyze them here, but I think people could watch those videos and say, hey, I kind of am experiencing that. Maybe I should also eat fish and start doing bacon mukbangs. I'm joking, that's, that's maybe further than most people would go. <laughs> and furthermore, people who go vegan often see really positive results then. So the diet is the solution in their mind. So if they're having another issue, they might assume that there's a dietary solution or something that might not be connected to diet at all. All right, let's get into the first one, which is depersonalization derealization disorder, which is quite simple in that the depersonalization can be thought of as a disconnect between your person, de-person, which is making you feel sort of out of your body, and then derealization is just de-reality, almost you have a disconnection from reality or your surroundings in particular. And this is where it gets crazy. Depending on the source, we're talking 50 to 75% of adults having one episode, at least in their lifetime of depersonalization, derealization. So a lot of people have experienced this. It just then goes to a disorder situation in only about one to 2% of people. But there's probably a lot of people in between that. And there are populations in particular, like this random rural population that had about 15 to 20% rate of depersonalization and derealization. And the going theory for the cause of this is that a state of anxiety or trauma leads the body to sort of desensitize itself or disconnect itself in a way that it can still function or not become overwhelmed as much. You, know, you have this extreme anxiety to the point where you can't function and then your body goes, nope, we're going to tone things down so that you can just do the bare minimum of functioning and from an evolutionary perspective, hopefully survive. And the basically therapist for all of YouTube, Katie Morton, touches on all of these topics and from her depersonalization, derealization video, she says, We feel disconnected from where we are. It feels like we're walking in a fog or we're like, it's walking really slow, everything's moving really slow. And I've heard a lot of this from many of my patients who have struggled through trauma. And that is honestly why I believe this exists. That's why I think this disorder is around and why people struggle with it, is because it's our brain's way of protecting us. It takes us out of our situation or our body so that we can survive. So when anxiety is the cause here, obviously if you're able to fix your anxiety, this hopefully would go away. And with trauma, obviously that's complicated. We'll talk about that more. You no, know, for good reason, if somebody is experiencing some brain fog, they might think, huh, this could be an iron deficiency. And going to psychology today to Emily Dean's MD writes, even in adults, the first symptoms of iron deficiency are often neurologic as those affected will frequently complain of fatigue and brain fog. The obvious first step here goes without saying is to see your medical professional, get a blood test, see if you actually do have an iron issue, but going to derealization, for example, from WebMD, literally the first <laughs> symptom is you are in a dream or fog. 
And so thinking about that cycle of anxiety turning into depersonalization, derealization, I can't help but think, you know, just from a theoretical perspective of Elise Parker there in Hawaii, thinking she's surrounded by this toxic mold and that it's super threatening in her environment over a long period of time could absolutely <laughs> lead to some issues like this. She then eats fish and then within hours really becomes sort of healed, which is biochemically impossible in terms of nutrients. Again, this is a speculative example, but I think people should just be aware that this is how the body can work. Like I grew up not realizing that a lot of anxiety could lead to things like this, like feeling like you're not in your body and so forth. All right, next up, and it is really all a bit similar and that is the disassociative disorders. But in this case, the actual perceived symptom can be different and that is memory loss or lost time. Again, the going theory is as a result of trauma or something similar, your body disassociates to deal with that extreme reality and that's a survival mechanism, a protective mechanism again. And again, I can't help thinking of Nikocado Avocado, who's just a bit of a tumultuous person, you know, frantically explaining how he had a memory loss and so forth. And he feels like his brain is like dying and all these things. And as you probably remember, he blamed those mental symptoms on a lack of omegas. We'll talk about that in a second, but just in terms of disassociative disorders, from the Mayo Clinic, their first symptom is memory loss of certain time periods, events, people, and personal information. So during disassociative episodes, you have that lost time where maybe you went to the fridge and grabbed a drink and you brought it back to your desk or something and then you forgot that you did that. Or one that I think is probably more common and not necessarily always uh, a bigger issue is just being on autopilot. Like maybe you drove back from work and then like wake up in the driveway, like what the heck happened? So I think you're kind of getting the idea most people probably experience. And dissociation is just another way to cope. So if all that stuff is going on and we're like a teapot, right? And we are steaming, we are about to blow. We're so overwhelmed. It just floats us out of our head and we don't even know what's going on. We don't remember that time period. And a lot of you will say it felt like you like woke up, but you weren't sleeping and then you're back where you were and, and it can be really freaky. But of course, someone experiencing this might be like, my brain is totally messed up. I'm getting like early onset dementia or something is wrong. And it might be the case that it's actually just association. <laughs> I also think of Miley Cyrus in this situation. She also never got her DHA tested, but again says that, you know, she needed to eat fish for her brain, which was just like messed up, she claims. Anyway, as you already know, in terms of a DHA deficiency, you can get that DHA that isn't fish directly from algae. It's exactly the same DHA because the fish eat the algae. And in addition, you know, maybe you can find it, but I have not been able to find a credible source saying that a DHA deficiency actually leads to the symptoms that these people are describing. There may be depression is the closest one. And again, a blood test is the best option because you might think that it's the DHA and just decide it is, but you might get a test, have okay levels, and then it's good for you to just keep on looking to solve the issue anyway. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't forward the solutions to disassociative disorders that Katie talks about, which of course is some good long-term talk therapy as well as some grounding techniques and just go watch her video for more information on that. Zooming out, I really have to think about the type of person that goes vegan as well. And I think this should, in a way be a badge of honor, even though it is maybe not a point of pride for most people, is that the type of people that go vegan are perhaps people who might be a little bit more anxious about like the world's problems and animal suffering, or they might have some degree of trauma that makes them empathize with animals and, and wanna be avoiding violence toward animals. You know, in the end, me learning about these disorders and what they can actually create in terms of how you feel, kind of blew my mind. I feel like everybody should be aware of this because A, anxiety is quite common. Like either you or somebody you know has some degree of anxiety and there's a good chance that they don't know that this is the state that they can end up in, even if it's just for a short period of time, even if it's not a long-term disorder. And so, well, of course, issues like brain fog and memory problems can be nutritional. They also can be completely disconnected from nutrition altogether. Like you can be a high anxiety person and lose time. That is very interesting to me. Hopefully you found this stuff interesting as well. Finally, again, sounding like a broken record, 
go to a professional. If you have any questions, please do not diagnose yourself <laughs> with depersonalization, derealization disorder from watching this video. That would absolutely be a failure for this video, but I still hope that this helped somebody and maybe down the line in the future, somebody who's going, I think I have an iron deficiency, might be able to find the real problem and just have a better state of well-being. All right, feel free to let me know down below what you think about all this. It's kind of a different video for me, different topic, but uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts and like and subscribe if you learned anything and I'll see you in the next one.